This guide is intended for people who haven't done any, or maybe just a little bit, of smartphone filmmaking. Because often the feeling is, where do I start? Shooting video with a smartphone, all the basic principles of filmmaking apply, and so pretty much every film or video camera is essentially doing the same job. You'll learn a lot from shooting and editing, because basically those two activities are at the centre of what you produce as a filmmaker. However, when it comes to smartphone filmmaking, there are actually a number of things to think about which are specific to the device. So here is a breakdown of things that you will need to think about. You will need to think about stabilization. Stabilization, it's not always required, but if you're doing handheld work, you will get uh, shaky shots. Well, the thing is that you might actually want shaky shots because it feels a bit more human. If you're filming a running shot, it'll be wobbling all over and you might want that. I mean, it won't be relaxing to watch, but it will be urgent. A shaky camera can actually put the audience more into the mind of the characters this way. Mounted on a tripod, your camera will be stationary. On a tripod, you can still pan left and right or tilt up and down. But if you want to keep your camera mobile, here are some other options. So another way uh, to achieve stabilized footage uh, on your smartphone is with optical image stabilization, otherwise known as OIS. Optical image stabilization works by moving lens elements to counteract wobbly hand-induced camera shake. OIS works by controlling the path of the image through the lens and onto the image sensor. Now this is done by understanding the camera's movement using sensors such as gyroscopes and calculating how the lens needs to move to counteract this. The lens module is then generally moved sideways or up and down normally by using electromagnetic motors. So sometimes the OIS actually creates more problems than it solves and you get a horrible kind of of vibrating jelly sort of effect and in that case it might actually be better just to turn OIS off if possible and that isn't actually always possible with some smartphones there's also EIS and that is electrical image stabilization let's just say it's a digital process rather than a physical process it's something similar to what you could do using software once the video has been shot uh, you, you might have heard of warp stabilizer for example and that basically just takes the video and tries to stabilize it by moving the frame around often you lose a little bit of quality from the image so there can be issues with that as well to remove some of that exaggerated movement caused by the smallness of the smartphone you can attach a simple grip before motorized gimbals became the thing to use many smartphone filmmakers actually turned to these simple grips to add some weight and size and well uh, grip to your device there are manufacturers, for example, Beast Grip are the most well known. You mount your phone and into the grip and you can also mount other things onto this grip. The grips have like handles as well, so that it's easier to grip. They add a bit of weight and you can also mount other things to the grip itself, uh, such as, for example, a lens. You can add a light, uh, you can add a microphone. Now, there's also a simple mechanical grip, which is a, a, a gimbal, but a non-motorized one. These are not particularly fashionable anymore. If you are in a situation where you didn't want to use something that has a motor, you might not have the opportunity to charge it, or you just might not want the issues that come with motorized gimbals. Uh, in that case, you, you might look at a simple hand grip and counterweight. Uh, Sean Baker, if you've heard of him, who, uh, he directed one of the most well-known feature films shot on a smartphone called Tangerine and he used one of these gimbals uh, so they can be used they can be effective it takes some practice it's a bit like a, a rocking boat as you're walking along it can kind of swing left and right a little bit now there's also a motorized gimbal handheld three axis gimbals are used in stabilization systems designed to give the camera operator the independence of handheld shooting without camera vibration or shake they're powered by three brushless motors and the gimbals have the ability to keep the camera level on all axes as the camera operator moves the camera 
So that's the kind of scientific description of uh, a motorized three axis gimbal. Well, in short, the three axis gimbal works to give your footage a smooth gliding look. So the kind of shot that used to require an expensive steady cam setup. Now you can achieve this with your iPhone. The Smooth 4 is one of the most popular and DJI also make a very popular smartphone gimbal. The uh, Osmo Mobile 2, now they just brought out the Osmo Mobile 3 as well, which is a sort of smaller foldable one. So manual control, perfectly okay to shoot using your smartphone camera's automatic controls. Because the thing is that smartphones are basically designed to be easy to use. You might find you like what the automatic controls do, or you just might like the fact that they're simple to use and convenient and fast. For example, what if a shot really requires speed on your part? Hesitation might cause you to miss the moment. In which case, keeping control set to automatic will actually help you focus on nothing but getting that shot. That said, you should seriously think about using manual controls because on automatic, as you move the camera, the image will change. The exposure settings will change as the light changes. The focus point adapts to whatever object is in the focus finder. The color balance can change too. If you pan left or right, unless the area you are filming has uniform lighting, the automatic exposure on your camera will start shifting the settings as the camera moves. You would never see that in a professional film. And the reason is because it looks a bit messy and also it kind of takes you out of the experience of the film because you see the, the light changing in a way that isn't natural. So how do you use manual controls on a smartphone camera? So if you find your inbuilt camera app to be tricky or limiting, there's also a number of downloadable video camera apps, both for iOS and Android. So these apps generally make your smartphone camera easier to control. And I would say the most well-known is Filmic Pro. Now this app is pretty famous among smartphone filmmakers because it's been used by director Sean Baker, as I mentioned earlier, and Steven Soderbergh, you know, who's an Oscar winning director. He's made a lot of films that we've probably heard of, Ocean's Eleven, for example, and Traffic. And he recently made a couple of feature films using iPhones and he's used Filmic Pro as great for controlling your camera manually. So there's other camera apps as well. There's Mavis, which is only for iPhone. There's Open Camera App, which is free. And there's, there's a few others as well. There's a list of them on our website, so check it out. Let's have a look at the basics, the three things that you need to think about having manual control over. And those three things are focus, exposure, and white balance. So let's talk about focus. I mean, I'm guessing you probably know that uh, a camera has to be in focus. I think most of us know that now. If your camera isn't focusing correctly on the intended object, that object will be out of focus or blurry. So you need to think about what you intend to focus on in the shot. Will this change during the shot as well? So how will you change focus during the shot? And are you going to use the autofocus to do a kind of focus pull for you? Or will you attempt it manually if you have focus control? I can tell you that our, our favorite camera app, Filmic Pro, does have the ability to create an automatic focus pull. You can set the two focus points and then it will automatically shift between one to the other. So that's pretty useful. And the second thing to think about is exposure. You know, every film or video camera is challenged in low light or actually high brightness situations uh, but the most common situation we find ourselves struggling with is actually low light I would say because thing is in low light situations if you leave your smartphone camera on auto the camera is going to boost up the gain and this usually results in something that we call video noise and this uh, noise will appear in your footage and most people find this noise to be rather ugly and undesirable and so it's something of a, of a videographer or a smartphone filmmaker's challenge is to uh, try to 
reduce this noise or, or, uh, or have none at all. To keep the noise levels of the video uh, as low as possible, we have to look at our ISO settings. So the one good thing about having manual settings is that you can set ISO. And on Filmic Pro, for example, you can fix the ISO. You can lock it into place and then the ISO will not move during the shot. And as I say, fixing exposure settings uh, during a shot is generally seen as a as a more professional way of filming so to reduce noise in low light situations how are we going to fix this well we try to keep iso setting as low as possible and um, every camera is different but my general tip would be to keep it below three to four hundred iso and maybe a hundred is actually a pretty good iso to aim at with a smartphone once you reduce your iso to that level the problem is you might might find that now the video is too dark uh, so now what is the option well you have pretty much two choices and the first choice is that you add more lighting to the shot somehow the other thing to think about is that you can also remove noise using various software when you come to edit your footage. There are some disadvantages of removing noise using software. You can end up with sort of a polished looking image, right? It sort of smooths everything out and you lose some of the detail in the image. The other thing to think about is white balance. Now, if you have a white balance setting on your smartphone, just have a play around with it and see how the image changes color from blue to green to orange and so on. Now the reason we adjust white balance is to get the colors in our footage as accurate as possible. One of the most useful features of the Filmic Pro app is that you can set white balance and you can also fix it. It doesn't have to be such a scientific process and you can just look at the image that you're getting on Filmic Pro and compare it to reality that you can see with your eyes or once you get a setting that you believe is pretty close to reality then what you do is you you click on that AWB tab and it goes red and at that point the white balance is now fixed so now you can go ahead and film your shot now smartphones these days they really have some pretty good inbuilt microphones perhaps that's not surprising did you know that uh, phones were once audio only devices I know pretty crazy right what these mics inbuilt into your smartphone are not so good at is that kind of close mic sound that we're used to hearing in films and TV shows. So to get that sound, you'll have to use something like a shotgun mic or a clip-on mic. Uh, I'm actually using a Rode VideoMic ME right now to record this. Uh, so this is the audio quality you can get from a $50 microphone. So check the website. We've actually made a list of all kinds of uh, microphones for smartphone filmmaking. You don't have to spend that much. You can also connect your microphones directly to the smartphone and record that way. And uh, it works very well. Anyway, the importance of audio is pretty well known, I think, amongst uh, the filmmaking community. And you can also fix the sound a little bit. Uh, using, for example, software like I use at Adobe Audition to clean up, remove noise, a bit of EQ and stuff, compression, all that kind of stuff. One thing you need to think about when you are filming on location is the background noise. So maybe when choosing locations, that's something to bear in mind as well. It's good to go to a location and have a look and just see what kind of sounds are likely to be going on at the time of filming. So it's not all just about buying the right mic. You know, you can have a a 700 pound worth of microphone, uh, but it's not gonna help you at all if there's a, a building site next door. Another thing to think about is lighting. So you can shoot with available light, and I do try to do that as much as I can because for me, smartphone filmmaking, even though I'm filming scripted films, I still feel the advantage of smartphone filmmaking is to, to work with what you have. Think about what light is actually on offer to you. Directors like Steven Soderbergh, he had a million dollars to shoot Unsane, his first feature film that he shot on iPhone, but he still used available light for 85% of the shots in that film. And another thing to think about is editing. So you've been filming for three days, you have a few hours of footage and it's looking awesome, but will it cut together? That's the big question, because editing, you know, that's where you learn how to be a filmmaker. That's where you give purpose to the shots. Without editing, your shots are basically meaningless. They're just like random sentences from a novel jumbled together. Now you have to place them in an order that creates something visually compelling and tells a story. And it's at this moment of editing all the shots you wish you had will suddenly become apparent. You'll suddenly go, ah, 
one shot goes to the next and you realize it doesn't quite work there's something that's just missing there that's how you learn the more you do the shooting and editing when you come back to shooting again you've learned your lesson from last time and you're like ah now i make sure that that shot works right to go to the next shot when you're filming always just give a little bit extra a little bit extra at the beginning a little bit extra at the end because you can always cut it off when you're editing but you can't add it on if it's not there you can't add it on so always leave that bit extra to play with and other times you know you'll just wish that you hadn't panned away at that moment the actor was doing something amazing it's just things like that so when you're editing you learn what you did well and you'll learn what you didn't do so well all the shots that you didn't get or you didn't quite get the way you now realize would have worked better when you cut to another shot it teaches you more about filmmaking than anything you've done so far so what do you use to edit your film I've used Final Cut Pro in the past. Uh, these days I use Adobe Premiere Pro. Uh, some people edit on their phones. If you check on the website, uh, we've got a list of the five best Android video editors. So another thing I would say, why not improvise and be creative? It's really important that you just enjoy the process of filmmaking and just think, how am I going to tell my story? It's fun. Filmmaking should be fun. Your limitations will actually force you to be creative. And when you're forced to be creative, you become imaginative and you start to think in different ways Then your film was going to look different to everybody else's. So if you're just starting out, I would say don't worry too much about the technical side because you can really get bogged down in that and you get stuck. But really what you need to to do is, is make a film, finish a film, which includes editing it, mastering it and showing it to people. So just go out, start shooting. Then whatever software you choose to edit with, upload your footage and get cutting. But the most important thing is that you finish your film. Even if the footage is not perfect, it's not as you imagined, and it's not quite editing together, you should really still finish that film. It's really important that you finish it and that you then go out and you shoot another one. Because when you shoot the second film, what you learned from editing your previous movie now informs all your shot choices for this one. And all those shots you wished you had when you were trying to get that clumsy footage into something not too clunky and ugly, all that pain and sweat, that's what will drive you to do a better film the next time. You know, when you return with the footage for your second film guess what lo and behold it's a little bit less painful to edit than the last one and guess what you need to do now you need to finish your film again you need to finish that second film and guess what you need to do after that you need to make another film that's right you gotta make your third film already wow that time passed quickly didn't it so you start filming and the strange feeling comes over you when you're doing your third film the feeling that yay hey you almost know what you're doing almost so you find yourself hunched over your pc or macbook or whatever you're using and yes the new footage is actually cutting together quite nicely you're feeling pretty proud of yourself because you imagine this shot would go to this shot and then this shot and holy shit it actually worked exactly as you thought it would so i think that's just about enough to get you started all i can say is Good luck, have fun.